Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little black subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that black subscribe button. Really does help our audience grow. Really does help our channel grow. Really does help and mean more than you could possibly know. So go ahead, hit that little black subscribe button. Also, thank you to our presenting sponsor, Betfred Sportsbook and the Betfred Sportsbook app. Bet 50 on any game. Get 250 in free bets. Thank you again to Betfred. Thank you again to you. Now, here is the video that you came here for. With a little bit of College Hoops Transfer Portal news and notes. So here is the deal. First of all, crazy weekend in the portal. Like, absurd weekend in the portal. Um, but it's wild how quickly this stuff ramps up and then dies down. Uh, two, three weeks ago, I think this was all anybody was talking about. But now, for the most part, especially after this weekend, it feels like most of the big transfer portal activity is done. Hunter Dickinson is still in, you know, as I'm recording here, Max Aismas is still in. Maybe that changes in the next 24 hours. But basically everybody else is out. I, I went back and looked. My most recent update of best players in the portal, I think it was nine of the top 15 players as of like Wednesday of last week have officially committed. And so what I want to do is just kind of give you some news and notes, some thoughts. I thought it was a great weekend for really four schools in specific. Gonzaga, Tennessee, Alabama, North Carolina, and it was a really bad weekend for one, Arizona. So let's talk about it, and let's start. Uh, Friday was a, a very busy day, especially for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. And if you've been listening to this show at all, you know that I, I don't know that I've been critical of Gonzaga as much as I've been concerned about Gonzaga. This is a program. I know everybody's got their opinions on them, but listen, bottom line is this. 2019. Made the Elite Eight, number one seed, good enough to win a national championship. 2020, if there had been a tournament, they would have been a number one seed. 2021, best team in college basketball until the national championship game. They lose to Baylor. 2022, they're the number one overall seed in the tournament. And so after that run, they definitely took a dip this year. And you started to look at that roster for 2023-2024 without Drew Timmy, potentially without Julian Strother. And you started to say like, is this the end for Gonzaga? Well, much like the gift from Braveheart, where I think it's Mel Gibson is basically, you know, he's got the sword up ready to take on the charging army. That was basically Mark Few on Friday as he got not one, but two big time portal commits. The first one, Graham E.K., six foot 11 center, 19 and a half points per game, nine and a half rebounds two years ago at Wyoming, missed all of last season with injury. He commits to Gonzaga. And then, oh, by the way, the big one, Ryan Nemhard, starting point guard from Creighton, 12 and a half points per game, four rebounds, five assists. He also commits to Gonzaga, so credit Mark Few. Let's talk about these commitments. First of all, Graham E.K., he's the one I'm guessing a lot of you probably don't know about. He is a really good college basketball player. Six foot nine, he's not perfect. If he was, he'd be in the NBA, but he's kind of in that Oscar Shibwe, Adama Sonogo mode, plays really hard, really physical, really aggressive, really tough, really whatever. Two years ago at Wyoming, don't forget, that was an NCAA tournament team. Wyoming went to the NCAA tournament. They were an 11 seed, lost in the play-in round, the, 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 the first four round to Indiana. Grammy K was the best player on that team. 19 points, nine rebounds per game. Unfortunately, this year he got hurt, did not play at all this year. But this is the kind of kid that I think, especially at Gonzaga, is going to have a huge impact. In a lot of ways, he's almost like Drew Timmy. Now, no one's Drew Timmy. Drew Timmy's quite literally one of the best college basketball players of this century, the last 20 years, easily. But Grammy K is a guy. You can plug him down low. You can dump him the ball. He's going to get you buckets. He's creative around the rim. He's going to score. And again, the way Gonzaga plays, they don't play a bunch of big guys. It's not the John Calipari we're playing two seven-footers. He just feels like the perfect piece to kind of run offense around. He's very creative with the ball. I think he's going to be a very natural fit. The big one, though, is Ryan Nemhart. And we've talked about Ryan Nemhart since the day he entered the portal. But I would argue that outside Hunter Dickinson, this is probably the best player to enter the portal this entire offseason. Keep in mind, he is at a Big East school. Power Six Conference, a team that has made back-to-back -back NCAA tournaments. And the day that he stepped on campus as a freshman, Greg McDermott handed him the ball and said, go be my starting point guard. Two years ago, he was playing excellent, unfortunately got hurt late in the year. 
comes back this year and was phenomenal. Like I said, 12 and a half points, four rebounds, five assists in the Big East. Now, he got a little bit overshadowed because UConn made its run. Marquette was great in the regular season. Tyler Kolick wins Big East Player of the Year. I don't know how many point guards in college basketball you're taking over him. And I know for a fact, like Creighton was crushed when this guy decided to leave. Now, they moved on. They did a good job grabbing Steve Ashworth, the guard from Utah State. But this was the guy that they were planning on building around. 30 points per game against Baylor in the NCAA tournament this year. And so now he goes to Gonzaga. And I think he has a chance to be one of the best players in college basketball next year. First of all, keep in mind, um, you know, his brother Andrew went to Gonzaga and immediately became, well, not immediately, but his second year became a star, ends up being an NBA draft pick. And that is probably why Ryan Nemhard, his younger brother, ends up there, saw what Gonzaga did for his brother. Gonzaga, I know for a fact, really sold him on it. He said, I can go there and be a star. So he's there. Graham EK's there. And now all of a sudden, the out- outlook for Gonzaga looks a lot better. Now, I, 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 they're still, to be clear, they're still not at that elite national championship contender status, I don't believe. And if you tell me in two years or five years or 10 years that Gonzaga missed its best window to win a national championship, it wouldn't shock me at all. It's really hard to have a team good enough every single year, year after year after year. And I do think there's an element of, you know, they, they're now, to me, a lot like every other program. When Tommy Lloyd was there, it's worth noting, they had that great balance of they had high school players that they developed over a two, three, four year period. Corey Kispert was one. He's now in the NBA, um, you know, whoever, it doesn't matter. They had those great international players. Rui Hachimura, who's playing for the Lakers right now. Zach Collins, who's in the NBA. He's not an international, but you get the point. Had the great international players, DeMontis Sabonis, who's playing for the Lakers. Remember, Sabonis play, or playing for the Kings. Sabonis played for Gonzaga. Rui Hachimura played for Gonzaga. Corey Kispert played for Gonzaga. Zach Collins, on and on. But I bring it up because I do wonder if those glory days Gonzaga teams are gone the teams that had the balance of the high school players that got developed, the international players and the one and done guys like a Chet Holmgren, like a Jalen Suggs, that era might be done. And, and, and I do wonder if, as I said a minute ago, Gonzaga has missed its best chance to win a national championship. Doesn't change the fact though, that listen, everybody is adjusting on the fly in this new portal world. And everybody's just trying to put together a roster good enough to compete at the highest level. Is Gonzaga like a top two, top three, top five team going into next year? Unless they make major changes, probably not. But do they have a team that's good enough to keep them towards the top of the sport? Keep that streak of whatever it is, eight straight years, making the second weekend of the tournament or beyond? Absolutely. And so credit Mark Few still think they're probably hoping on Julian Strother to come back, junior uh, player who has another year of eligibility. But. Right now, this team is much improved than it was a week ago, and I feel a lot better about them. Really quickly, though, while it's very while, while you got to feel good about Gonzaga, about uh, the Gonzaga element of things, there was a very interesting side story that is worth discussing more, and that is the team that Ryan Nemhart chose Gonzaga over. And if you remember the day Ryan Nemhard entered the transfer portal, I can tell you this on great authority. You can go back and listen to the show that I did. But when Ryan Nemhard entered the transfer portal, it was almost a foregone conclusion that he was going to Arizona. It was a foregone conclusion. I had somebody tell me straight up, it's already done. He's going to go through the process, you know, so he doesn't doesn't look suspicious. But Gonzaga's where he, or, or Arizona's where he wants to be. Tommy Lloyd was the one that recruited him to Gonzaga. Tommy Lloyd and the family have a great relationship. He's going to Arizona. And so for Arizona fans, really this whole offseason was built around, yeah, we're going to lose a guy or two in the portal. Yeah, things are going to look different. But we're going to get a couple guys back, and we're going to have Ryan Nemhard, and that's going to be the start of the transfer portal cycle. Well, on Friday, not only Arizona did not get Ryan Nemhard, and For the first time in his regime, I am here to tell you, Arizona fans are starting to question Tommy Lloyd. And is that fair? Is it not fair? I don't know, but that's the bottom line. And what's interesting is, I'll tell you this, you know, as as this whole thing unfolded, what I go back to is the day that Arizona lost as a two seed to Princeton in the NCAA tournament. Sorry, Arizona fans, to bring it up, but we got to discuss it. 
I bring it up because when Arizona lost to Princeton, I'll be honest, I was in general shocked at how little heat Tommy Lloyd took for that loss. Now, keep in mind, it had been kind of a, a yellow brick road to that point. He takes over. Sean Miller completely leaves the cupboard full. But as I've said many times on this show, as good as the talent was that Sean Miller left, I don't think he could have gotten as much in the 2021-2022 season out of that group as Tommy Lloyd did. Number one seed, I think they finished 33-4, and four, losing the Sweet 16, Ben Matherin, Dale and Terry, Christian Coloco, Tubelis, Kerr, Kreisa, et cetera. This year, they lose a lot of those guys, but when they lost in the NCAA tournament, I was kind of blown away at how everyone else seemed to take the arrows other than Tommy Lloyd. And that's not to say, by the way, be clear, that's not to say Tommy Lloyd's a bad coach, he's overrated, He's that's not what I'm here to say at all. But at the same time, what I can tell you definitively is this. When they lost to Princeton, I didn't hear a peep about shame on Tommy Lloyd, this, that, the other thing. It was, it's Kirk Reese's fault. Tubelis is really good, but he's soft in those big moments. These are the things that I heard from Arizona people, fans, people that cover the team. Well, on Friday, it officially went from everybody else's fault to Tommy Lloyd's fault. And now he has a lot of questions to ask and answer because the bottom line is this one, all of Sean Miller's players are gone. Ben Matherin got drafted, balled out in the NBA. Dale and Terry got drafted. Christian Coloco got drafted. Tubelis is going pro. Kirk Reese a transfer. So this is now entirely his program. But here's the other thing. As I said a minute ago, this entire offseason was built around the idea, well, you know, doesn't matter who leaves, we're getting Ryan Nemhard, and then we're going to roll from there. And so to lose him, to lose him to your biggest rival, people are starting to question who Tommy Lloyd is and can he close on the recruiting trail, and more importantly, even how he puts together his roster. For people who don't follow this on a day-to-day, minute-to-minute basis, I think the criticism of Tommy Lloyd is, at least publicly, he casts a very narrow net. He's not... Certainly not Eric Musselman offering 30, 40, 50 players in the portal, or I I don't even want to say that about Coach Musk, reaching out to 30, 40, 50, 70, 80 players in the portal. Now, Arkansas, whoever doesn't offer all those guys, but but Arkansas reaches out to everybody. And the criticism at Arizona right now is we're not casting a wide enough net. We're narrowing in on too many guys, and then when they have other options, we're screwed. We don't have a backup plan. And it kind of happened last year. Now, Arizona rallied. They got Courtney Ramey, who I thought would be a good fit. Sort of worked out, sort of didn't. Cedric uh, Cedric Henderson sort of worked out, sort of didn't. But now you fast forward, and it's just interesting because right now, I don't even know if Arizona has a starting five. Tylen Boswell's a really good college point guard. Umar Balo, fifth-year senior, transferred with Tommy Lloyd from Gonzaga, appears like he's coming back. And um, Pella Larson, a wing is going to be coming back as well. And there's a few younger guys that were on the bench. I'm sarcastic when I'm saying that they don't have a starting five. But you look at that roster right now. It's not really a top 25 roster right now. And the problem is you put all your eggs into that Ryan Nemhard basket. There's not a lot of guys left in the transfer portal. Um, Ryan Nemhard's gone. A kid named Latrell Reitzel, who we're about to talk about in a minute, he was supposed to take a visit to Arizona. He he cancels that visit and commits this weekend to another school. And so, listen, I'm not going to give up on Tommy Lloyd. I believe in him. But as Arizona fans are saying, I think it's fair to start asking questions. Why are so few kids being offered? Why are so few kids being pursued? And is there an adequate backup plan when you don't get them? We're going to find out a lot about Tommy Lloyd, a lot about this staff in the coming days, weeks, and months. Because at the end of the day, right now, there just is not very much on this roster let's go through some other news and notes from the portal um first of all i did an extended video on this on youtube so go ahead and check it out but on saturday really big commitment in the acc my main man hubert davis me and hubert davis have been through a lot right didn't love the hire criticized him early took the l when he made the final four then kind of have been defending him since well he had a disastrous year Missed the NCAA tournament, all of that. But I'll give credit to Hubert Davis where I can. He has done about as good of a job as you can possibly do in the portal coming off of a season where you don't make the NCAA tournament. They have added four impact players. The most notable one came on Saturday. 
when Harrison Ingram, forward from Stanford, committed to North Carolina, former McDonald's All-American, six foot seven forward, ten and a half points per game. Now, why I like this fit is a couple things. One, North Carolina just needs dudes. But two, what I really like is the pieces that Hubert Davis has brought into this program. As I've said many times, it appears as though the North Carolina talking point coming out of the spring is the 2023 season. We're blaming everything on Caleb Love, okay? Caleb Love, basically, for people who don't remember, was basically told, you know, you're not really welcome back. Like it was a mutual agreement for him to leave. Baycott comes back. RJ Davis comes back and they've added four really nice pieces out of the portal. Um, uh, They added, first of all, Paxson Wojcik, six foot six guard from the Ivy league, really good three point shooter. They need shooting. They need spacing around RJ Davis, Cormac Ryan, 12 and a half points per game at Notre Dame. Really good shooter. Jalen Withers, kind of a big four man out of Louisville. But Harrison Ingram's the guy that they needed because he's a guy that's a true wing. I think he's versatile enough where he can play the four in some big lineups. He can play the three in smaller lineups, but he's kind of that, that Swiss army knife that can do it all. Need an open jumper. No, he wasn't a great shooter, but I think it'll be better with more talent around him. Need him to attack the rim. I think he'll do that again. I think he is going to be very good at North Carolina This was an important win for Hubert Davis because that was the one spot they did not have talent uh, on the wing spot. They get it. And now what will be interesting from here is if there's one more move left for Carolina, do they still pursue Mackenzie and Baco, the five-star who was committed to Duke? Do they pursue um, more players in the portal or they have two really good guards that are in the class of 2024? Does one of them reclassify? Rumors are Elliot Cadeau, five-star guard is seriously considering it. Ian Jackson, we talked about when he committed a few months ago. So keep an eye on that. But I'll tell you, you know, much like Gonzaga, when I do my updated top 25, probably going to have to move North Carolina into the top 15. They're looking really, really, really good right now. A couple of our teams that had big weekends, one Alabama credit NATO. It's like NATO listen, happened in the regular season. We've talked about it in the off season though. This guy lost, all three play all three of his assistant coaches to head coaching opportunities. And so why I bring that up, this man has been a one man portal machine attacking the portal because he really has no choice. So he's starting to fill out his staff, but it's taken a little bit longer at Alabama. I think he's done a really good job though. Right now they have three players that are currently testing the NBA draft waters. Javon Quinterly, Mark, Mark Spears. I almost called him Marcus Spears. Who's the, Oh, Mark Sears. Mark Spears is the NBA beat writer. Mark Sears is the is the Alabama basketball player. Charles Bediaco is the third guy. So we don't know exactly what Alabama's roster looks like, but they needed help in the backcourt, and they got not one, but two big commitments this weekend. The first one, Aaron Estrada, 20 points per game, played at Hofstra, was the two-time Colonial Athletic Player of the Year. He's just an Alabama guard. He gets buckets, he can attack, he can score, he shoots about 39% from the three. That is an Alabama guard if I've ever heard one. Now, it's worth noting, he played one year at Oregon, did not contribute much, and so I don't think he's going to be a star at the SEC level. But can he get you 10 to 12? Can he get you buckets when he's the third guard? I think he can. And then the second guy is the one I just mentioned with Arizona, Latrell Reitzel. A very talented kind of big guard slash wing Six six foot five or so, 16 and a half points per game. It's funny. I'll just say this. He came from Cal State Fullerton. Fullerton's about probably 40 minutes from where I live. I bring it up because I kind of know his backstory well. And the Fullerton staff, you want to talk about the new era of college basketball. They kind of sold him on, hey, we think you're being under-recruited. Come here, ball out for us. And in, in two years, if you think you're as good as we think you are, We're going to encourage you to enter the transfer portal, encourage you to go to the high major level. And that's exactly what happened. Year two, 16 and a half points per game, ends up hitting the portal, ends up getting offers from Alabama, Arizona, Nebraska. He's from Omaha, commits to Alabama. Alabama, like North Carolina, like Gonzaga, they're going to be in that top 15. Alabama already was at about 13. They're going to have to be a top 10 team the next time I update my poll. Finally, talk about a team that's made a jump. 
How about Big Rick Energy? But I'm not talking about Rick Patino. I'm talking about my main man, Rick Barnes. So we talked about him last week. They picked up two big commitments out of the portal. Jordan Ganey, shooter, Chris Ledlam Ford from Harvard, and then Santiago Vescovi came back. But that pales in comparison to what they did on Friday. Dalton Connect, maybe the best wing in the portal. You know, Harrison Ingram was probably better. But this was a kid who averaged 20 points per game at Northern Colorado. I think he's one of the best players in the portal this offseason. And it was reflected in who recruited him. North Carolina wanted him. Kentucky reached out to him. Indiana wanted him. Dalton Connect committed to Tennessee on Friday afternoon. And I got to tell you, this to me, he's the exact guy that Tennessee needed this year. A guy, you know, six foot seven, six foot eight, can get buckets. What's the thing with Tennessee? They play great defense, but they don't score enough. Well, now you got Sakai Ziegler. You got Jordan Ganey who can hit buckets. You got Santiago Vescovi who can get buckets. Dalton Connect. This Tennessee team has a chance to be a very good team again next year. Now, I know, I know, everyone's going to, well, Rick Barnes always in the tournament. Well, just remember, this was a team, you could criticize them if you want. They lost to Florida Atlantic, but they made the Sweet 16, and that was without their starting point guard, Sakai Ziegler. Really excited to see what this team looks like.